LA County Jail, you know, people describe it as a dungeon hell on earth. It truly is. On December 9, 2013, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department got some very bad news from the U.S. Attorney's Office. We unsealed five criminal cases that alleged criminal conduct by a total of 18 current or former deputies of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. This scandal has been developing over the years. It's not as if the, these indictments came down in a vacuum. Peter Eliasberg is the legal director at the ACLU of Southern California. The organization has tracked abuses inside the LA County Jail for decades. The Los Angeles County Jail System is the largest jail system in the country. It is run by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Three of those indictments involved either excessive use of force, covering up that use of force, or otherwise trying to obstruct justice. One of the indictments involved a, a, an effort to basically move an FBI informant around the jails to hide him from the FBI, to in, try to intimidate or otherwise interfere with FBI agents from doing their, their, their jobs. After the charges, Sheriff Lee Baca maintained that the department was not experiencing systemic problems. No perfect law enforcement agency anywhere in the world. There is no institutional problem within the Sheriff's Department when it comes to correcting itself. Federal government doesn't do a lot of oversight over local law enforcement. So when the sheriff says, oh, there's no institutional problem here because this is just some tiny number of people, you know, you're never going to find a law enforcement agency where the majority of people are doing terrible things. That's not going to happen. But when you have 18 who are federally indicted, that's a major, major problem. And this isn't just, you know, deputies. We have lieutenants, we have sergeants, those who are supervising these deputies. Esther Lim is the director of the Jails Project at the ACLU. She frequently monitors the jail for confinement conditions and proper medical services. LA County Jail, you know, people describe it as a dungeon hell on earth. It truly is. Lim witnessed a beating inside the jail while visiting an inmate in 2011. The deputies were not a part of the 18 officers recently charged, but the incident speaks to the culture inside the jail's walls. As I'm talking to this inmate, I hear um, noises that sound like, um, like someone's fighting. So I look out and peer through the window out to the staging area of Twin Towers of that particular floor, and I look to my left and I see two deputies, and they are beating and um, kneeing and eventually tasering this individual as they're yelling, stop fighting, stop resisting. Um, and I'm looking at, at, at the, the inmate and he's lying on the ground and he's not moving. So to me, when I'm seeing that, I think he's unconscious. The entire time that I'm, I'm watching this, the two deputies that are beating this inmate, they don't know that I'm watching them. So, um, so I thought, you know what, this is inappropriate. This is obviously an ex excessive use of force. So I banged on the window to get their attention, to actually get them to stop, and they didn't, they didn't do anything. They either didn't hear me, or they were maybe too involved, or, um, um, but yeah, they didn't respond to, to my hitting the window. And this violent culture inside the jail isn't just directed at inmates, it's directed at visitors too. One of the individuals, Gabriel Carrillo, he was a visitor to Men's Central Jail and he was beaten severely by the Sheriff's Department personnel. I'm in a room with all these cops just beating up on me. Uh, I blacked out and I thought the worst was going to happen where I'll just end up dying in there. Eliasberg says the corruption could easily move beyond the jails. Most of the deputies who start their careers in the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department go out and become patrol deputies. They patrol the unincorporated areas of Los Angeles. Many jurisdictions or cities within LA County hire the Sheriff's Department to provide patrol. So I think it's important to recognize that what people learn, abuses, falsifying records, engaging in excessive force, what they learn in the jails will show up on the streets in, when the Sheriff's Department is doing patrol. Certainly the federal government has said the investigation continues. They will take the investigation where the evidence leads. But some of the behavior that's delineated in these indictments, for example, moving a person around the jail who is known to be an FBI informant, that's a really big deal. It seems to me that people higher up probably knew uh, and probably were the ones who directed this behavior. Uh, I don't know that for a fact, but I just think it's, you know, if you found out that, that, that somebody who was just an accountant at GM had, you know, and that there was this major financial uh, uh, scandal at GM, you'd probably say it wasn't just directed by the accountant, that people up, higher up uh, in the food chain must have known. And I think that there's a good chance that that's the case here. And I think that there is at least a possibility that what will happen will be more indictments and the indictments will be of people who are higher ranking in the department.